So let's hear tonight's first theory. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the show. Can we have your name, please? David Crystal. And can we see your theory, please, David? Oh, Thank you very much. Uh, your theory is that texting is good for the English language. Uh, OK, what's, what's your background, David? What's your, your credentials? Well, texting is a kind of language. Language is studied by linguistics. I'm a professor of linguistics, have been for the last 32 years, and I've written a book on texting. Is that enough? That's pretty good, David. <laughs> yeah, I'd say that was enough. OK. <laughs> All right, then. What are the myths that you want to debunk, then, about...? The myths are as follows. A lot of people believe that texting is done by kids only. Secondly, that the kids fill their text messages with abbreviations, entirely abbreviated, these messages. Thirdly, that the messages, these abbreviations, are invented by the kids. It's a modern thing. Fourthly, because the kids are leaving the letters out, they don't know how to spell. Fifthly, because they don't know how to spell, they're putting all these things into their essays and into their examinations. And as a result, they're gonna, we're going to rear a generation of kids who are going to be totally illiterate. Right. And every one of those statements is a load of chicken droppings. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say, that's the teenagers applauding out there, but... That's it. OK. <laughs> is it possible you feel just a little too strongly about all this? <laughs> Well, let's go through them. The abbreviations, that's a myth, yeah? You say the kids... Yeah, I mean, that's the first point. Well, the first point is that it's kids that do it. Not right. so. There are something like three billion mobile phones in the world at the moment. Half the world's population <laughs> has got a mobile phone at the moment. Yeah. Two-thirds of those people text, and 80% of those people are adults, not kids all at right, all. I've got a question for you now. So, of all the texts sent by adults, how many of them have a point? <laughs> all of them have got right. a point. Right. All of them. All Nobody of them. sends a text without there being a point. Yeah? Well, that's not true. Yeah, right? it is true. If you get a text from somebody which says, I'm on the train, yeah. Yeah, you think, that's absolutely total rubbish and trivial and what's they, what are they doing? But the point is, they've sent it to you. They're thinking of you. For that moment in time, there's that little rapport between you and the person that sent the text. Well, not if I get it and I think, why the hell is it? I don't care whether he's on the train. <laughs> no, but they, they, they're, they're basically saying to you, Andy, I love you. All right. You know, <laughs> I'm feeling uncomfortable now, David. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, then. Um, what about the accusation that kids can't, you know... Well, let, let's work our way through it. Yeah. When you actually collect a big pile of texts together yeah. and count up all the abbreviations that are in them, how many words are abbreviated, you find only 10% of the words in text messages are actually abbreviated. Okay, so and that means that, you know, most of the words are in standard spelled English and the yeah, kids yeah. are not misspelling most of the time. Secondly, the kids made these things up. Not so. Um, if you go back 100 years, you'll find abbreviations like C, E, U, yep. later, and all of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Queen Victoria did this. Lewis Carroll did this. Sure. Thirdly, kids can't spell because they leave letters out. Why are they leaving the letters out? Because it's cool to leave letters out. But if it's cool to leave a letter out, you've got to know it's there in the first place in order to leave it out. Right, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm, I'm right. frightened to ask the next question. <laughs> Eighty percent of uh, texting is done uh, by adults, you say? Mm -hmm. OK, the other facts that you listed about texting, where does that data come from? Oh, from studies that have been done over the last five, six years. You have to remember, this is such a recent phenomenon. Ten years ago, we couldn't be having this discussion. Yeah. You know, mobile phones came in in the 90s. Texting first started in the late 90s. But kids weren't really texting until yeah. 2000, 2001. And it took a while for the research to build up. Now, one of the reasons why it took a while was because how do you get the data, you see? So you've got a, a mobile phone with texts on it. Will you let me see them? Can I see your, your text messages? Will you give me your text messages, please? And most people say, no, they're mine. You're yeah. not having them. You know, you yeah, can't yeah. have them. And so it takes a while for researchers like me, and not just me, lots of... To relax them. To, to you don't do it like that, though, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I must have your text messages! I must have them! <laughs> Martha, Martha do, you, do you text? I text a huge amount. I text yeah. my friends a lot, but I use it in work a lot because it's a very good way of getting in touch with politicians. In the old days, you used to have to send beeper messages. It took forever. Now you can get an instant response. So, I mean, this morning, actually, yeah. I texted a cabinet minister. I wanted to come on my programme at lunchtime, and I got a text back saying, uh, sorry, uh, can't talk now. I'm in the cabinet meeting. 
I thought they're <laughs> sitting there while Gordon Brown's there texting that's away. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. This is, this, is, this is the bad side of texting, the social side. Remember, the, my theory is about affecting the English language. Yeah. Um, what, what are the things it does? How does it enrich the language? Everybody would agree that literacy is important, yeah. learning to read and write. Yeah. And everybody, I think, agrees that the best way of learning to read and write well is to get practice in it. Yeah. The more you read, the more you write, the better. Along comes a phenomenon, a technology, which gives you stunning opportunities to practice reading and writing. Admittedly, it's on a phone. Admittedly, there's only 160 characters and so on and so forth. Yeah. But it's still practice in reading and writing. OK. And as a result, it's not surprising to find that all the latest research from the last couple of years demonstrates that the more you text, the better your literacy scores. Right. So and the earlier you get your mobile phone, the better your literacy scores. So are you funded by some phone company or something? <laughs> oh, I wish. Isn't it possible if you're just spelling through, through text language that you do genuinely think that the word is, is spelt in that way? Um, it could happen, but if that was so, you'd see the thing turning up in all kinds of other contexts too. I mean, I go into schools quite a lot and I talk to the kids and I ask them that very question. I say, would you use your abbreviations the textisms, the cool textisms, in other circumstances apart from your mobile phone. They look at me as if I'm nuts. They say to me, you know, what, what would we do? Sorry, I mean, not an unintentional yeah. laugh that was, there, David. That, that was... No, it's, it's, it all was like, silly, yeah. It's like Andy said, it depends on how you ask them. If you ask yeah, them, yeah, like, yeah. do you use the, the <laughs> incredible words? Can you show me the words you use? If you do yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> So they don't write no. essays where they, they say... They do look at... They say, they say, we wouldn't do that. It would be dumb to do that. We'd get low marks if we did yeah, that. Sure. You know, most kids are actually intelligent. Are you uh, dating David? a 16-year-old right now or something? <laughs> <laughs> she looks like a 16-year-old sometimes. I bet oh, she does. David, you are so romantic. <laughs> no, OK. <laughs> let's think for a moment. I mean, you're saying that it's, you know, changing language, improving language, but let's think about... Um, how it might be changing people as well. We've got an example here. This, this is the kind of thing that makes people like Daily Mail readers and sometimes myself worry that it's making us more banal. This is a, a, a text that was sent into the Daily Star and it says, I had to get up one hour early this morning. Why don't we leave the clocks alone? I hate Gordon Brown. <laughs> now, what worries me is that before texting, he'd have had to keep that to himself. <laughs> but the thing is, you'll get messages the size of the one we just saw on screen, yeah. um, which are uh, genuine expressions of support or dislike. Uh, I mean, in a sense, this is democracy but, in action, like well, we've never seen before. Well, th that's not democracy, is it? That just, that's just... What was his name? Mm -hmm. Tom from Whitehaven. Whitehaven. In yeah. the old days, we would have heard zippity-dip from Tom from Whitehaven. <laughs> I mean, there are downsides to texting. I mean, if, if you do get addicted to it, and text message addiction is now a recognised thing. You right. know, uh, organisations like the Priory don't just deal with dr drugs and, and alcohol anymore. The first cases of text message message addiction went through their doors a couple of years ago. People who text 12 hours a day, 15 hours a day, that sort Good of thing. Aren't, aren't those people what we used to call stupid people? <laughs> <laughs> One more way that it might be changing people. Do you think it's making people less punctual? Because I've noticed uh, that there is a yes. tendency, yeah. whereas in the old days you said, I'll see you at 9 o'clock at the station by the entrance, now people say, I'll text you when I'm on my way. And you've got hordes mm -hmm. of people who go and who probably never even meet up because they're yeah. always constantly sort of texting mm. each other. They, they all seem to sort of be in a state of fluidity. Oh, you think that's, that's... that's an interesting one, yeah. I mean, you may be quite right uh, that it, it may actually affect our social behaviour in that way. Mm. But I say again, if it affects our social behaviour, that's one thing. It's not causing the English language to deteriorate, wow. which is my theory. Well, David, you've argued very forcefully, but I think, I think the moment of truth has come. Uh, Reg, what are you going to vote on David's theory? I'm going with Dave. Uh, I agree with every single point that he's made. He does it entertainingly and does it with conviction and with passion. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. be easy, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go with a big A4 approved here. All right, then. Uh, Martha, what do you think? Well, when I first heard the theory, I thought, that's absolute rubbish. I can't believe it. You know, I think texting is so reductive, even though I do it myself all the time. But I have to say, I'm really convinced by it. So, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm going to approve it as well. All right. Well, listen, I, I am a little bit worried about the loss of uh, 
adverbs and kind of all the frilly bits that I think, you know, make discourse easier. However, if you can promise me, David, that I don't have to worry about that, I will, I will approve. Oh, I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. <laughs> no, yeah. see, I don't believe you yeah. now. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to vote no, yeah. but, but sadly, yeah. I've been outvoted. So I have to say, David, that your theory that texting is good for the... Yeah, I know. <laughs> you want to you do it, don't you? Oh, you're going to let me do it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, OK, on, so then. this is going to be like a trip to the candy store for me or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you want to do it. OK, all right. Well, I'll do it if you, you know. Uh, no, I don't want to make a big deal about it. It's like you're about to get upset about it, so I'll just go All ahead. right, then. Good for the English language. Yeah. Approved. Yeah. Round of applause, please, for David Crystal.